As your users are going through and interacting with your forms, one thing that you're going to probably find from time to time is that you may want to provide them with immediate feedback based on what they're doing at that exact moment. So for example, if I'm creating a new customer in the application, I might require that I capture their entire address um, and maybe an account number. However, if they're just a prospect inside the application, I don't necessarily need to complete their address until they actually become a customer inside Dynamics 365. Or you know, maybe in addition, I have some type of error message that I want to display if somebody enters something incorrectly or if they're missing information. In the past, that really could only be done using client-side scripting, and that's where you had to go in and have a developer go in and create that information for you. But by using Dynamics 365's business rules feature, you have the ability to do a lot of the same functionality, and the, the really nice thing about it is it can be done by anybody inside the application that knows how to work through it and has the ability to customize the application. They don't have to be a developer to actually go through and consume that. So in this module, we're going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about what business rules are, provide you a little bit of uh, overview in regards to how they work, um, how the design engine works in regards to working through the actual business rules themselves. We're going to look at the structure and the design elements and talk about how you build them from scratch and work through them. And then we're also going to talk about how conditions and actions play into, into account with business rules and how what happens inside the application will affect other aspects as they're moving forward. What exactly is a business rule? Well, think of a business rule as client-side scripting that is done without actually having to do any programming. So if you wanted to go in and, and have some client-side logic that's applied as the user is interacting to the form, but you want those to be built by somebody who has more of a knowledge of how the business works and what should be brought in, that's where business rules come into play. Now, it's not necessarily going to replace all of the client-side scripting or the JavaScripts that you would see inside a Dynamics 365 application, but it does allow you to replace a vast majority or a large portion of the potential need for client-side scripting in the application. Now before we go through and actually talk about how to build them and work with them, there's just a couple of key things that you need to remember. The first thing is, is how they're triggered. So they're actually triggered when a record is opened or when a field changes um, that has a rule or a condition associated with it. So when somebody opens up a record inside the application, that business rule or those business rules are going to evaluate to determine whether or not they should be applied. And then as somebody is going through and interacting with the application, those business rules will then be applied at that point as well. Now the key thing to remember is that's a little different than calculated fields. Calculated fields don't actually update or calculate until, until the record has been saved or reloaded. With business rules, they are, in essence, real time. Now, there's a couple of other things to remember is you may create business rules at kind of an entity level. If a business rule mentions a field that is not referenced on a specific form, it basically just ignores it. So the nice thing about these business rules, too, is you don't have to really be conscious of whether or not the fields that you're referencing in these business rules are on the form, particularly if you're doing role-based forms. If they're not on the form, they just get ignored. You don't get any errors or anything like that. The biggest difference that you want to keep in mind from business rules with like traditional client-side scripting is their field-level rules only. So I wouldn't have the ability to have it like hide a section or hide a tab on a form. I could certainly go in and have it hide specific fields that are in a section or specific fields that are in a tab, but I can't hide the entire tab and section. Now, that's not that huge of a deal because honestly, if I have um, a bunch of fields in a section and I hide hide all of those fields in that section, that section's not going to display anyway, but there's a little bit more administrative work that has to be done on that as opposed to if I was going to use client-side scripting and just use the entire hide command for the section or the tab in general. Before you start designing business rules, there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. And probably the first thing is what's called the rule scope. And so this really defines when that business rule is going to run inside Dynamics 365. And there's really three basic types of scopes that you're going to see. The, and you can see this kind of down here on the bottom of the screenshot as well. There's the single form, 
So if, for example, you're doing role-based forms and you have multiple forms in the application, I could create a business rule that is just targeted at like the information form or a sample form. That is only going to run when that form is loaded inside the application. So for example, if I had multiple forms that were using the same type of situation and I had it set to a single form, I would have to create multiple rules for each form that I'm working with. That doesn't happen as often. Most of the time when I'm thinking about business rules, particularly because they don't necessarily, they get ignored if the fields aren't on the form, most of the time you're gonna see that scope be set to all forms. And so basically what that means is any form that's associated with this entity this business rule is going to be available and to run on. And the nice thing about that is now this is what's going to transfer over into like your mobile applications. This is also what's going to transfer over into like the quick create form as well. So when somebody goes in and opens up that entity form and is actually physically entering information into that form, then the business rule is going to trigger and run. So it's still very much a client side event in the, the respect that the forms have to be opened in order for somebody to work with. The other option that you have is more of an entity-based scope. And this runs not only from the client perspective when somebody is entering in the form, but it also works from a server-side perspective. And this would be like for pre-populating data and putting information into an entity when somebody maybe imports information in. Now, you're not gonna use the entity-based for the visual type stuff where you're making things required or not required. You're really gonna truly use that more for data population. But it's important to note that when you are creating the business rule, you want to define the scope that's going to work best for you based upon what you're doing. Now, from a business rule perspective, one of the very exciting changes that's happened with Dynamics 365 is they've actually redesigned the rule designer. And so now you have more of this drag and drop interface that you can use when creating these business rules inside the application. So you'll have this rule designer window that you can see here that actually allows you to drag different elements over. So you can create conditions, you can create actions, and then based upon what you've drug over into the designer, it's gonna give you specific elements and properties that you can modify based upon those situations. And what's nice about this designer is as these rules maybe get bigger and expand into different areas, you can maximize and minimize, zoom in and out to actually make sure you're taking full advantage of the design real estate that you have. You can copy existing steps, you can delete steps. You can use this to really take snapshots of where you're at so if something isn't necessarily working right, you can work with information from there. So the cool thing about this new designer is it really gives you a one-stop area to visually be able to decide how you want this process to look like as you're designing it. And then down at the bottom, you will also have kind of a text view that gives you more of that traditional, here's in words what's actually happening with this business rule. If this happens, we're gonna do this. If not, we're gonna do this. And so we have this very definitive action on how we wanna work through these. The baseline or the cornerstone for any business rule is gonna be the conditions. And so rules are only gonna execute when a condition that is defined inside the rule is actually met. So what this allows you to do within the designer is compare different field values to maybe other field values, maybe compare information to static values inside the application, or even just compare information to formulas. So really think of the conditions as triggers that are going to fire actions that will follow. And there's, there's several different options that you have when you start talking about these conditions. You know, if this happens, do this. Else do, you know, if otherwise if something else happens, do this. Or if this and this happens, now I want you to go ahead and do this. So what this allows you to do is to really look and identify what's happening. So for example, I can see here on this condition that I'm working with the account entity. Uh, the rule is looking at the entity itself it's defining if there is a specific relation uh, field or value inside the relationship field. And if the relationship type value equals customer, I am going to do something. Now, the cool thing about these conditions is they don't necessarily have to be based upon field values or other items. You could actually have some of these conditions be based upon like business process flow steps. So if you have a business process flow stage and somebody comes into that stage, you can have it evaluate conditions when they're going into that stage and determine whether or not you want to do something based upon those individual items. 
Now, again, as if anything, you have this concept of if-else conditions, which gives you the alternative if the first condition is not met. Now, it only allows you to do if-else. It doesn't necessarily allow you to do nested if-else functionality. If you wanted to do something similar to that, you would have to look at potentially creating a different rule to accommodate that. But the nice thing about this is, you know, I'm going to check to see if this field contains this value. If it does, this is what I want you to do. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have you go ahead and do something else. Now, the nice thing about this is you can have kind of a, a default statement that says, okay, if none of my conditions are met, here's what I want you to do. So I could establish four or five different criteria and say, if this is true, we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to do this. Otherwise, if none of this is true, then I'm going to go ahead and do this kind of finalized situation. A lot of times when you're creating these business rules, you have to take that into consideration because it doesn't reevaluate. You need to make sure that it understands every possible scenario so when it's evaluating those conditions, it always can arrive at some type of solution. And I'll show you that when we actually go in and do the demo here a little bit as you're moving forward. It does support when you're doing these conditions and an or grouping functionality. So I can say if this is true and this is true, do this. Or if this is true or this is true, do this. The only thing I cannot do is I cannot have a condition that is both and and or. I couldn't have a scenario that says, you know, if the city is New York or Boston, and the status is this. It doesn't let you do that. So you do have to potentially look at maybe different rules to accommodate that, but you can still accomplish quite a bit with the different if-else functions in the application. Once those conditions have been evaluated, now it's going to fire off actions inside the application. And those actions are only going to apply when those conditions are true. So it's going to look at what specifically took place, it's going to compare those values, and then it's going to go ahead and determine those actions based upon those items. So you do have the capabilities, like I said, to specify multiple conditions and then have the actions triggered. Same thing with formulas, but it is only going to fire those actions if the entire statement is true. So if it's an AND statement, all of the items inside that AND statement need to be true, and then it will initiate the individual actions. Now, these are just some of the different actions that you have inside the business process flow error. You have your ability to show error messages. So if there was some type of thing, maybe somebody didn't put something into a field and you wanted to let them know on that, you would have them have the capabilities to display kind of a generic error message. This is where you would definitely want to have kind of that else condition associated with it. So once somebody has put something into that field and now you no longer have that criteria being met, you would want to have a condition that would now remove that error message from the application. I can set field values, I can have it, you know, created a specific value, I can have it clear information from a field, I can have it perform a very basic formula based upon those information, I can toggle requirement levels so I can make something either business required or not business required, I can set visibility if I want, I can lock or unlock fields on a form. And one of the cool things that they now have with Dynamics 365 is I can do this what are called recommendations. And so I can have actually have it recommend specific values and maybe another field's drop down list based upon what they picked in a different field. So if I pick customer in this field, maybe I have a drop down list that has five or six different values. I could recommend a specific value in that other field based upon that option. So these actions really give us a lot of flexibility to determine how we want to push information from there and how we want things to physically be presented to the users inside the application. Another thing that business rules have the ability to do, as I mentioned, is formulas. Now, from a business rule perspective, when we're talking about formulas, we're not talking about real high-end calculations or real advanced calculations that are going to go in and evaluate a lot of different kind of business logic scenarios to be able to work with that. We're talking about fairly simplistic situations. So it supports addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. 
Now, you can get somewhat complex within those different elements based upon what it is that you're doing, but you don't necessarily have the capabilities to do multi-tier formulas based upon very complex business type scenarios. It really only allows you to do formulas based upon fields that are numeric or contain data or contain date fields. So this is what you can see kind of on the side of very simplistic situations. So I'm looking at the created on date of a record and I have a formula that is going to run on the created down date that is basically going to go out and add three days to that situation. So maybe I have a scenario where I want the follow-up date to be three days after the created on date. This is where I would be able to go in and kind of define what I want that to happen. So I have a condition that says if it was created on this situation or if the opportunity contains this type of information, now I want to follow up with that in three days. So now I'm gonna have a formula that's gonna run on the follow-up by that is going to basically add three days to the created on date and then populate that inside the application. That would be a very, you know, a very simplistic example of what you might see from a formula perspective inside the business rules. We mentioned this a little bit at the beginning of the module as well, but I do wanna kinda of come back and kinda of reiterate when these rules actually get triggered. And so the first and foremost is when the form loads. So if you're trying to do things like setting default values, if you're trying to, to show fields based upon what's actually being displayed inside that record, the onload event is, is great from that perspective. So anytime a record loads, the onload event is fired, it's going to go out and trigger that business rule. They also trigger what are in what are called kind of the on change event or when information inside that form changes, it'll reevaluate, determine if any business rules need to be applied to that and then work with it from there. So that's what's going to potentially give you that real time feedback that you're going to see when people are interacting with that form. And then if you have the scope set to entity. So the first two options that you see there for on load and on change, those are client side scenarios. Those are your traditional, you set it to all form or you set it to a specific form. If you set it to an entity based scenario, then it runs server side. So then it's actually going to run like when a record created or a record is opened from those different perspectives. So it's a little bit different execution model, but typically that's not going to be used for presentation type business rules. That's going to be used more for data validation business rules or items where you're going to be pre-populating information inside the application. So now I'd like to take you in and we'll kind of create a business rule. There's a couple of different ways that you can initiate the creation of the business rule. Now I'm going to do this on the account entity just because there's a few fields that kind of illustrate that point. So I'm going to go into the account entity and as I go into the account entity you see that I have kind of a business rules option. When I click on business rules here, this will show me all of the business rules that are associated with the account entity in the application. The other way that I could do this is I could go into forms and I could open up a specific form inside the application and then there's an option on the form itself to actually do business rules as well. So I could go in and open up the form, click on this business rules button here and then I would be able to create a new business rule at that point. Now here's the difference. If I go into the entity and I click on business rules here and I create a new business rule, the business rule is going to apply to all forms associated with that entity by default. If I go into a specific form and I create and add a business rule, that business rule is only going to apply to that form by default. Now it's super easy to change the scope at any point, but just keep that in mind when you're designing it. If all of a sudden you went into the form and designed a business rule and you were expecting it to work on other forms in the application, odds are it's because you went into that form directly and the scope never got changed to all forms. So again, it can be adjusted, but just be aware of that where you go into to create that business rule will have a little bit of an effect on what the scope is going to be set to inside the app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new to create a new business rule and this will open up kind of my new business rule designer. So this is where I can kind of decide uh, what I want to call it from a naming perspective. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this relationship type. 
Now I'll see over here that this is that scope that I was telling you about. So this has been automatically set to all forms based upon that option. But if I click on this, this will show me and give me the ability to set it at an entity level, which would be my server side execution, or give me the ability to set this for individual forms based upon what I want to do. In this case, I'm going to just go ahead and leave it at all forms because I don't care what form type we're on. I want this to be able to be uh, facilitated. So I can see here that there's already a condition kind of established inside this option. So over here is my rule designers where I can actually start defining how I want these flows and these items to take place. And it's really just kind of a drag and drop scenario as far as putting that information in. And then based upon those conditions, here's my individual actions. And you basically just kind of drag the information over and present it, position it where you want inside the application. And then the business rule item down here will kind of tell you what's taking place based upon those situations. Now I already have a default condition in here so I'm going to go ahead and click on this condition and this is where it's going to allow me to edit this particular condition inside the application. So the display name on this we're going to just call this relationship type. We're going to work on the account entity and you'll notice that that's pre-filled based upon the fact that this was a business rule that I was associating with that entity itself. Then I can look at the source. So this is where I can define if I want this business rule to be triggered just based upon the regular entity itself or based upon a business process flow. So if I have a business process flow associated with the account entity that has multiple stages, this is where I could pick a specific business process flow. I could then pick the process that I want to work with and then I could actually define whether or not I want this to work on an active stage or a selected stage. This is where from an interaction standpoint, if I really wanted to dive in based upon the business process, I would be able to do that. Now that's not necessarily going to apply to what we're trying to do here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just say entity itself and then specify the field that I want to work with. So in this case, if the relationship type field, so I'll scroll down here to relationship type, equals and then I can determine if I want this to look for a static value so a value that would be defined within that field itself or I could determine whether or not I wanted this to maybe compare with another field in the application and then I could specify what field I wanted to work with. In this case we'll just do a value and determine whether or not it is a customer. So we're going to go ahead and say if the relationship type is a customer what do I want to do? And then it shows me kind of the text view for that option. So then I can go ahead and hit apply. So if the relationship type equals customer, I want to do something. So now I can go back over into my components and I can define what it is that I want to do. Well, if they're a customer, I want to make the account number field required. So I'm going to scroll down into my actions options here and I'm going to find set business required and I'm going to drag that over next to my condition and says, okay, if this takes place, this is what I want to do. I want to do a new action. So in this case, I am going to cust num required. The field that I want to work with is the account number. And I am going to set the account number to business required and then apply. Now the other option that I could do is as I've gone through that's pretty straightforward. Now I haven't necessarily defined what I want to do if it's not. So in this situation I can go back into my components and then this is where I could do additional options based upon this item. Now let me just kind of show you here a little bit. So if I come over into here and I drag this option down. Now I have a situation where I can say, if this takes place, do this. Otherwise, I want to set this as not business required. So this is where now I could come in, go into this set business required action, pick account number, and say, not business required. So I have a very simplistic situation. This is what I want to take place inside the application. Now, the other option that I could do is I could just continue to build this if I wanted to maybe do something around a vendor until I ultimately wound up with no 
other actions or options that I want to go through. So this is a very simplistic example of what you might do, but it's a very real world specific scenario on how you might apply this in the application. So now the final thing that you want to do is once you've kind of built your business rule and say, okay, this is what I want to do, now you're going to then basically go in and validate it. And so what the validate does is it goes out and just makes sure that all the arguments are legit and that they're going to be met okay and that you're not really going to have any issues inside the application. Then I can go ahead and save my business rule. And then once I have it saved, then I have to activate it. If you don't activate the business rule, then you will not, it will not actually work inside the application. So now I'm going to activate my business rule. It'll confirm activation and ask me if that's what I ultimately want to do, and that's fine. It'll show me that it's been activated in the application, so now I can close out of here. And now I could consume this. Now I don't necessarily know if I, I don't think the relationship type is actually displayed on the form yet, so let's just go into the account form. Let's open up the account form here real quick. And let's make just a couple of customizations to this. So I'm going to take the account number field and I'm going to move it underneath the account name field. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find that relationship type field. And I'm going to drag that over underneath ticker symbol. Actually, let's put it right underneath account number. And then I'm going to save and publish. Now I'll close out of here and I'll go back into my application and accounts, open up an account. I can see that the account number is not required, relationship type doesn't have anything defined. I'm going to switch relationship type to customer and now I can see my account number becomes required. If I switch it back, maybe to investor. Now my account number is no longer required. So this is just a very simplistic example of where you could use business rules as part of your application. But think about it in terms of error messages, formulas, any number of different situations to really provide kind of a nice look and feel to your application as you're working through. By using business rules, non-developers can create client-side logic on Dynamics 365 forms with really no programming at all. Um, as they go through and create and define those rules, they can determine if they want them to run on a client side, so if they want to be tied to a specific form, or if they want to run server side and not necessarily be associated with a specific form. Maybe from like a, a data import type of perspective. Now, while they do provide very similar functionality to client side scripting inside the application, you really want to look at using business rules for simplistic business requirements that can be met with, without getting too overly complicated inside the application. If whatever you're trying to accomplish is involving a lot of different rules and it's getting overly complicated, you may find that it's just easier to actually have the developer create the scripts um, and then just add them to the form. But if you're really working with for simplistic operations and items from that standpoint, business rules work great because as you could see through kind of the demonstration and the item that we've done, it's very easy to design them and it's very easy to associate them with simplistic fields inside the application. Just be aware of when they're going to run and making sure that they're not going to get overly complicated. And in those situations, business rules can be a wonderful alternative to some of the existing client-side scripting functionality that exists.